everyone likes kissing. On average, humans spend about two weeks of their lifetime kissing, some nations probably even more. However, about 10% of the world's population spends these two weeks differently. For some people, kissing is a very serious business, called philematology. You've never heard of it? Well, that's probably because you've only kissed someone or been kissed without thinking about what happens in your brain when you kiss and what substances are present in your and your partner's saliva. If you think that saliva is only good for protecting your teeth from bacterial decay, for helping to swallow and digest food, or even to compete with your friends to see who can spit the furthest, then you have never looked at its importance from the philematological point of view. For these scientists, saliva is the inevitable potion of love and bonding, or sex drive. Well, it has been discovered that it contains testosterone that stimulates libido. This property is subconsciously used by men who try to increase the amount of testosterone in their partners and turn them on by the means of kissing. Studies suggest that this is possibly the reason why men like sloppier kisses more than females. However, females are also not innocent of using saliva. They might be even shrewder than their male partners. They use saliva to assess a male's qualities, for example his immune system and his genetic makeup, in order to detect the healthiest and strongest father candidate for their offspring. Moreover, they also reveal information about their estrogen cycle and thus fertility to men. With kissing it's a bit more complex. As we say, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, but we can't say the same about kissing. What happens in the mouth doesn't stay in the mouth, the brain also gets involved. When we kiss, the nerve endings on our faces, lips and tongues get stimulated and they carry nerve impulses to the brain using different neurotransmitters. And as different regions of the brain get stimulated, different neurohormones are also released. When we kiss, the dopamine system is altered. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter as well as a neurohormone. It helps to perceive pleasure, emotions and pain in the brain. So when we kiss, many receptors are stimulated and dopamine is then released as a neurohormone. It acts on the body and makes you feel naturally high. Dopamine is known to be released when we take alcohol or drugs and that is probably why we get a feeling of being drunk when we're in love and kissing someone. Some studies have suggested. And when you feel your knees shaking, heart racing and cheeks blushing, you know adrenaline has been released as a result of the stimulation of the brain. Thus, another hormone system that gets turned on by the means of kissing. As well as a neurotransmitter in the central nervous system, another very important hormone that is involved in the biochemistry of kissing is oxytocin. Oxytocin is known to cause bonding and affection between people, and one can see why its levels seem to increase when we kiss. Some scientists believe that this is the reason why couples that kiss more often stay together longer. When we kiss, our levels of anxiety go down too, since oxytocin has an anxiolytic effect. Have you ever thought of kissing someone when you're stressed? No? Well, maybe you should. It's been shown that kissing lowers stress since levels of the stress hormone cortisol go down when we kiss, and on the other hand, serotonin levels go up and thus we feel more energetic, happier and relaxed. Some scientists believe that the obsessive behavior we show when we kiss and like someone is due to the high levels of serotonin, as similarly high levels of serotonin have been found in the patients suffering from OCD. Cool, right? Well, there is much more to philematology than this. But for now, you at least know what effect your saliva and brain have on the feelings you get when you kiss someone. You can be grateful for the release of all the hormones that provide you with the right kissing mood. However, there aren't only good and positive things about kissing. Based on a study, when we kiss we exchange water, proteins, organic compounds, different fats and salts, but also about 10 million to 1 billion of bacteria, out of which 95% is non-pathogenic to us. However, as everything has a dark side, there are some diseases you can catch during an active kiss. We can become infected by upper respiratory viruses, herpes viruses and also Epstein-Barr viruses, which are responsible for flus, colds, cold sores, but also infectious mononucleosis, which can knock you down for a couple of months and thus prohibit you from kissing and preventing you from feeling kissy for much longer than you might have wanted. So next time you want to kiss someone, think about it first and use your kisses wisely.